Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on nuclear chemistry. Today we're going to talk about the structure of the nucleus of atoms, and we're going to talk about three main types of nuclear decay when isotopes become unstable, Al emission of alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. Now to begin with, um, we'll consider hydrogen. Hydrogen consists of one proton and one electron, and as chemists we're usually interested in the electron because that's how we make chemical bonds. But in nuclear chemistry, if we zoom way in close to take a look at the nucleus, we see there's just one proton here. Now there's an isotope of hydrogen called deuterium, which also has one proton in the center, but also has a neutron, which has uh, zero electric charge. Deuterium is a stable isotope, and normal de uh, normally deuterium uh, comprises about 0.015% uh, of normal hydrogen, but it's possible to purify uh, deuterium and, and get it into uh, pure form. There's an, a third isotope of hydrogen with the special name uh, tritium. And tritium has two, no tr two neutrons and a single proton. And this is too many neutrons. And so tr the nucleus of tritium is actually unstable. And what happens with tritium is that every once in a while, one of the neutrons will spit out an electron called a beta particle. And that will turn a neutron into a proton. And because we have two protons, then we have an atom of helium instead of hydrogen. In fact, it's helium-3 because it has two protons and one neutron. Helium-3 is stable, and so uh, helium-3 is the main product of the nuclear decay of tritium. Now there are three main types of ionizing radiation that come from unstable isotopes like this. Um, the first is an alpha particle. An alpha particle is a helium-4 nu nucleus and it consists of two neutrons and two protons. It has a relatively heavy mass, four atomic mass units approximately. It's highly charged, has a, an electric charge of plus two, and has very strong interaction with matter. So if an alpha particle is emitted from an atom uh, and interacts with your uh, cells and your tissues, it can cause relatively heavy damage, ionization, breaking chemical bonds, things like that. Um, fortunately, alpha particles also have low penetrating power, and so they're very easily blocked with a piece of paper or heavy clothing. So it's easy to protect yourself against alpha particles if they're outside your body. The real danger comes from accidental ingestion of radioactive particles that emit uh, alpha particles. The next type type of uh, ionizing radiation is called a beta particle. And a beta particle is just an electron. It has a relatively light mass. It's about one two thousandth of the uh, mass of a hydrogen atom or uh, a, an atomic mass unit. It has a single negative charge and it has relatively strong interactions with matter but not as strong as alpha, beta, alpha particles. Beta particles will do moderate damage to cells and tissue, and they have moderate penetrating power as well. So they're not as easily stopped by a piece of paper, but could be stopped by a thick piece of wood or maybe a thin piece of metal. The third type of ionizing radiation is a gamma ray, which is just a photon. Gamma rays are very similar to X-rays. Uh, they have somewhat shorter wavelength than than X-rays, but there's some overlap. Uh, gamma rays have zero mass and zero charge. They have a relatively weak interaction with matter, just like X-rays, and we're all familiar with the fact that X-rays pretty much just go uh, straight through your body uh, with very little absorption. And uh, they'll do moderate damage to cells and tissue, like beta rays. They have very high penetrating power, and it takes very thick uh, lead sheets or uh, even thicker concrete walls uh, to block gamma rays and to protect you from that ionizing radiation. Now, uh, there are several modes of radioactive decay uh, that are uh, accomplished by unstable uh, isotopes. And we've already seen that uh, beta emission, which occurs with tritium, converts a neutron into a proton. That raises the atomic number of the atom, but lowers the number of neutrons by one. Just the opposite is electron capture, where a proton can ca actually capture one of the electrons uh, in an atom and turn that proton into a neutron. This lowers the atomic number, um, but it raises the number of neutrons by one. 
Uh, similarly, positron emission is where a proton would actually emit a positron, which is an antiparticle of an electron or an anti-electron. Uh, that turns the proton into a neutron, lowers uh, the atomic number, and raises the number of neutrons. Now, interestingly, the positron will travel typically a short distance before it's annihilated by collision with an electron and that produces uh, two gamma rays and so that can be detected pretty easily in uh, PET scanning or positron emission tomography. Uh, the uh, fourth type of radioactive decay is alpha emission, and this occurs uh, primarily with large and heavy nuclei where they will emit an alpha, alpha particle, which you remember consists of two nu uh, neutrons and two protons, and so that lowers both N and Z by two, and the, uh, alpha emission is often accompanied, accompanied by gamma emission. So here's a table of uh, stable or a graph of stable isotopes and on the x-axis uh, you have the number of neutrons going from 0 to 50 and on the y-axis the number of protons or the atomic number going from 0 to 50. And most of the stable isotopes um, are fairly near the uh, 45 degree diagonal on this chart where the number of protons is equal to the number of neutrons. As you get to very heavy atoms uh, then um, the stable nuclei have somewhat uh, greater numbers of neutrons than protons, but uh, it's fairly close to uh, the 45 degree diagonal. Now the unstable um, nucleides are indicated by the crosses and the open triangles in this chart. And if you are, if you have a nuclei nuclide which is below and to the right of this valley of stability in the middle, then uh, a likely mode of decay is beta decay because beta decay will raise the atomic number and lower the number of neutrons and so you sort of go up and to the left on this chart to get to the valley of stability. If you I have a nuclide which is above and to the left of the, this valley of stability, then uh, the more likely modes of decay are electron capture and positron emission, which will take you uh, down and to the right and toward the valley of stability. Uh, alpha decay occurs with uh, large nuclei and basically doesn't do very much for you in terms of taking you toward the valley of stability, but um, is often accompanied by other types of decay. Next time, we'll talk about radioactive decay kinetics, we'll talk about nuclear binding energies and how to get nuclear energy from systems either by fission of large nuclei or fusion of small ones, and we'll talk about some applications of nuclear chemistry including carbon dating and uh, medical imaging. We'll see you then.